Speaking of scenes that ruin a show. Oh, here we go. We're going to turn this into a, a review thing. The Red John scene. Spoilers for The Mentalist. Right, you build this guy up for six seasons. First of all, I, I made like a whole bunch of videos on this actually too. I, I should probably re-upload some of those. Like, okay, so in season three, they have him appear in like a mysterious way. And then, then he kills him in a public place. So what's the difference between those two scenes? The scenes are, one's in a mall. It's a public place where like he, he finally caught him off guard a little bit with the hotel plan. He like does the whole thing where he tells all the potential moles that the guy's going to be in this hotel room, blah, blah, blah. So the point is that was a pretty good plan. And all it did was catch him off guard and expose him for a moment. But he's still confident he can escape and get out of that situation with ease. Right, your colleagues are gone. What are you going to do to stop me? That kind of thing. So the point is that was just to to reveal him and then he thinks he's going to get away so it, it took him not only bringing a gun with him having a gun right that he didn't know he had and just shooting him in cold blood and of course the best implication there is the fact that he would go to jail and he'd be willing to do that right to take revenge the way that they had built up and talked about earlier in the series uh but then instead that fucking season six thing is so shitty although to be fair the first several episodes of season six are pretty good i do love the way it starts like the first eight episodes are actually kind of intense but yeah, it was just so shitty. Like he loses to a pigeon, like he catches his little weakness in one of those scenes. But a character that's developed like that would be aware of that, right? He would know that, oh, I exposed my phobia to him. Like the amount that he's a overthinker, even if it's like, oh, he's so traumatized by the fact that he's scared of it. He would think later like, oh shit, obviously he saw that. So now he's going to know it's me or he's going to have that as part of his repertoire. So it just makes no sense that that would be adequate. He only has one gun on him. He faked his death. He's in hiding. Nobody even knows he's alive, but yet he only has one gun. Like, what the fuck are you saving your, your artillery for? If not that one moment, right? Nobody even knows you exist right now. He's in hiding, right? He's on the run. But no, I'm going to have one dinky pistol. And if one pigeon disarms me, I guess I'm fucking dead. That's it. No backup plan, nothing for a guy who was such an immense planner the whole fucking time. It's just not consistent, right? You don't get to cop out like that. And then fanboys trying to argue like, I think I even had a debate about this because it triggered me so much. Fanboys tried to say like, oh, well, he's really not as great as they built him up to be. Well, on one hand, if you think he's not that great, then it ruins the whole series because it was predicated on how impressive he was in part. But also it's like, oh, he's just a man. He's just a person. Obviously, he's just a person, but he's a very smart one as the whole you know series was predicated on but more specifically it's like you just need a more layered plan you you need something or like i said you need the sacrifice like oh the only way i can beat you is if i go to jail so at least that's something to think about like you can't beat him in a legal way you can't take him to court you know that's just not gonna work so you have to go out on a limb and just sacrifice yourself to do it which is a fair trade and he was willing to make that trade as he talked about many times throughout the series